In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions where there's tons of activity on screen. We'll talk about this in a moment. And then we're going to move on. We're going to talk about some upcoming storms that look a lot like the one we see in the southeast, actually. We're going to be talking about multiple of those in the upcoming pattern and some big temperature changes. As we just take a look at these current conditions, we can tell there's plenty of storming that's taking place up in the northwest here as another, yeah, surprise, surprise, storm system is moving on shore to the west. And then we have this storm system here, which we've been talking about kind of with the swinging cold front here that you can see. And then the warm front kind of snaking along here. Uh, but we do have a warm front basically pushing northward as we speak. This is increasing temperatures across the eastern United States. And these cold, cold temperatures behind the cold front is leading towards extreme weather in there. We'll zoom into there in just a second. I want to talk about this. We do have a low right about there. With a warm front swinging on shore, cold front kind of behind things, and then an occlusion here. Pretty big occlusion. Uh, we do have plenty of storminess here, as you can see across the northwest. Uh, Washington, Oregon, California in here. Uh, some really broad low pressure in here along the frontal boundary. Obviously, we have the occlusion out here. Um, and in general, this is just leading towards tons of precipitation moving up the coast here, as you can see, of the northwest in heavier fashion in general we can see a lot of yellows and oranges popping up here along the coast and even down south here for portions of california and southern oregon there that is where we're seeing some more moderate to heavy precipitation taking place as we look inland we do see there is some uh also lighter precipitation out here snowfall for some of the cascades and some of these rocky mountains as well uh, along states like idaho very far inland oregon and even montana there we're seeing a bit of that as well now, as we work our way eastward here, we can see where this low is bringing impacts here, kind of some broad low pressure, but I think this is our primary low here that I'm circling. So what we're seeing is a lot of motion like this through here. Uh, obviously, again, this warm front kind of a little bit stationary, but we are seeing this surging warm temperatures heading northward. And this is basically allowing for this severe weather event to take place in here. Multiple confirmed tornadoes in there, as you can see, we'll zoom in on that in a second. We've even had some tornado warnings as far northward as Kentucky and uh, Tennessee as well. So we're seeing some of that going on there. Basically, everywhere where this warm sector exists here, which is anywhere south of the warm front at this point, uh, we're seeing severe weather as that cold front swings through. We're even seeing some convection out ahead of things as well, uh, certainly overperforming a little bit there to the east. And as we work our way, we're just going to work our way south through the severe weather, we see that tornado that kind of took place here, uh, kind of south of the Lexington uh, area there. Let's just get a, a better idea. Richmond, Kentucky there, and through Stanton, Danville as well. So it kind of headed through like this. We had that tornado warning. I don't think we ever got a confirmed tornado from that, though. As we work our way southward, uh, currently there is a tornado warning here throughout portions of Tennessee right along I-40. Just to the east of Knoxville, this is approaching White Pine and near uh, Dandridge there as well. Uh, that is a tornado warning, still not a confirmed tornado like I mentioned, but it's as we work our way down towards Alabama here. We have this confirmed tornado here uh, that took place, a couple of confirmations there near the Haleyville and Double Springs area, kind of in between there as you can see. We saw that confirmation, a couple of uh, reports of that earlier on today. And then crossing the border from Mississippi and Alabama, we had a supercell develop here south of Birmingham, Alabama. This one has been a long stretching tornado. As you can see, it crossed over I-59 there uh, and just kept on going through Brent there. Um, let's just see some other areas in here. Uh, in south of Gainesville in Alabama, Moundville south of there. I remember these areas kind of being tornadic in years past. West Bollockton, Blockton. Maybe that's how you say that. West blocked in there. Um, uh, Mont Vallow, uh, Alabaster there. That, that kind of area is where we saw the confirm confirmation. And uh, it kind of slid south there, as you can see. So this is the danger with tornadoes. Look at how it just slides south right there. Uh, now, I'm not even going to attempt to say that. But that is where that is headed at this point. We did have a tornado warning to the south. Now that is confirmed. And that is going to be crossing I-65 north of Montgomery there. We do have an observed tornado here, kind of just to the east of Selma now. Uh, so that might have actually passed through Selma as a uh, tornado on the ground, unfortunately. So multiple tornadic cells in there, as you can kind of tell. Oh, and then look, we have another 
confirmed tornado here north of Mobile in Alabama as well, um, near Mount Vernon there. So we're seeing right there uh, at a really strong-looking supercell back here headed towards Mount Vernon there in Alabama. Unfortunately, it's going to happen a little bit too late for me to even um, – this video is going to come out a little bit too late for me to even warn you guys properly of this, but I hope everybody stays safe uh, during these events. This is just terrible, terrible, terrible. And in my opinion, we have an enhanced risk today. I think things are overperforming a bit. So keep that in mind. It's looking to be a very dangerous day today. As we work our way into the Northeast, we do see snowfall throughout New England. Uh, it's kind of some snow showers moving through heavier in some spots. The whites are going to be pretty heavy as well as those blues. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the upcoming model guidance. Now as we work our way through our European model we can see that a lot of this energy that is in the current conditions located in here is going to basically be over the eastern United States. Now it is expected that as this will be during the overnight hours this is going to be much less intense so we can only hope that that is the truth here for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Uh, it appears like some thunderstorms will be possible, uh, but it does not seem like severe weather is going to be very likely whatsoever for a lot of these areas. Mostly general thunderstorms is what we're hoping for here. We can tell the jet stream is very amplified, as you can see, taking a deep dive there. But we have this kind of southeast intrusion of warm air still taking place, and this is why the coast is all rainfall there, as you can see. Uh, so we're really taking a look at a lot of areas seeing storminess, but not really some snowfall outside of just the mountainous regions inland uh, here for the Appalachian Mountains. There we're seeing some snowfall and then some of the Ohio Valley as we see this cold air damming southward there uh, kind of around all of this energy. So we have the low here kind of doing this type of action, which is sending things southward to the west of the low. Right there, we also have some snowfall taking place for the very far northern areas of New England as well. As we reach the afternoon hours of Friday and Saturday here, we can see that we still have this very amplified jet stream, a deep diving trough that won't be that intense, um, but it will reach very far south. So we've talked about this before as well. Uh, this seems to be a very, very intense trough as far as how far stretching it is, but not how you know cold it is, if that makes sense. We see our next storm developing by time we're reaching about Monday the 16th here. We have a bit of a cold front underneath, perhaps a warm front there. So giving us a bit of a, a similar setup here, we do have our storminess still continuing out west, believe it or not. Uh, this has been kind of ongoing for months now. Uh, maybe some cold front, warm front action in there somewhere. Uh, it's very hard to make out where that would be at this point. Um, and that does shoot a lot of energy here to the east, but it's pretty sporadic. We see our next storm system kind of developing here. Uh, it's deep dive down the west coast and it's working its way northward at this point. We can see a lot of this energy is matching up with that storm uh, here from the Gulf through Texas. Would not be surprised if this day here on Wednesday the 18th features some severe weather underneath here from areas like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, somewhere in there. Uh, definitely as time rolls on, we can see for Thursday there. Uh, this is going to be the 19th. We have our low located here. Definitely a warm front, cold front type situation. Uh, and we would be seeing probably severe weather again possible on this day, Thursday the 19th, with snowfall up to the north here, as you can see. So we're seeing that taking place. And then it reaches the east coast again overnight Thursday into Friday. If that sounds familiar, that's the same thing that's happening this week as well. We do get a bit more snowfall here on the northern end of things, as you can see, uh, especially New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, and Maine there as well, so we're seeing more cold air available, but still not what we're really looking for. Uh, and we see that there is a clipper system that rolls through still at the end of the model run here, potentially going to bring some snowfall to the Great Lakes in some of the upper Midwest there, as you can see. Uh, if this will stretch a cold front underneath itself, um, we could see even more severe weather with this one as well, but that's going to have to be for... Uh, another time where we can really see if that is what takes place or not. We do have another storm system moving into the northwest there as well, as you can see. And this is the very end of the model run, although there is a lot of energy that looks like it wants to move up the coast here. Could bring some rainfall along the coast there the, the following days after this. It would be just too warm for snowfall. Now, as we take a look at our GFS model here, we can see what's different about it. Uh, and nothing's going to be too different until we reach about beyond 200 hours here. We do get more storminess there, as you can see across the east, another storm system moving through. Another one here as well, potentially more major, but we need to take this with a grain of salt. 
I think the main takeaway here is that we get another boxed in look or cornered in look here where we get this warm front up to the north, the cold front swinging underneath. And as you can see, it corners the southeast here. That's why I'm calling it kind of cornered in. Uh, so we get a lot of this warmth and energy moving into here. And then the swinging cold air behind it moving in that creates that severe weather. So this could be another event continuing on in late January, just like we've seen. Uh, and then we get another one, perhaps, there. This looks a little bit less amplified to me. Kind of just some broad energy moving through just like this. No real low or cold front or warm front here. We're just seeing a lot of moisture in general moving up like this. Uh, so for the time being, uh, it does look like we have some sort of Arctic low moving down here. Uh, and this is bringing some colder air to the north central United States. But as you can see, we still have this southeast bubble here kind of keeping the warm temperatures here in the east. Uh, so that is the look here. Nothing too promising here on the GFS model either. Now, believe it or not, the Canadian model has been more accurate this year so far than the GFS model. We get kind of the same thing as the European model here, but what we get in the long range after the 21st here uh, is this trough that begins to move in, and we'll, we will see this totally sweep its way into the eastern United States there with perhaps a storm moving up the coast here. Um, so we get, I would say, primary trough is here, although it's kind of like this trough everywhere, but more intense here in the east, and we have this storm system moving around it. So this is the most promising thing in this entire video at this point. Uh, definitely very interesting, to say the least. Uh, now, stay tuned with us. I think we are on the verge of a breakthrough here for beyond the 20th time frame. We've been kind of marking that date uh kind of hypothetically speaking, on our on our calendar. I haven't really marked it on my calendar, but mentally I have taken notes of that date, and I think you should too, kind of after the 20th, perhaps the 22nd, 23rd time frame, just kind of like this Canadian model showing. For a few days now, we've been talking about how there has been some hints at a model, or the model runs showing a pattern change, so we will be watching for this very closely. So be sure to subscribe, as we will just continue to track these things. Uh, as we take a look at this European Ensemble model, and work it all the way through, we can see that right around, uh, or actually we're going to need to move it back a model run here to the 0z zero zero run to get the, the, the kind of range that we need. But we see right here around the 20th, this is the look cold in the west, warm in the east, kind of what we've been dealing with here. No change, so uh, that is kind of the look that we've had. But then right after the 20th, look at that, we start to get some blues moving in and it just gets more and more intense here. And this looks a lot like that Canadian model. Uh, where there's cold from coast to coast and i've talked about how this is very rare on the channel but we did see this actually this previous i think it was october or november you guys will have to remind me but we did head into a pattern very similar to this where it was cold from coast to coast so you can't roll it out entirely uh things do look colder though beyond the 20th at this point according to the european ensemble which is really good and a really good model to pay attention to in the long range and the canadian model kind of backs up that theory although you know for what it's worth, you're going to want to take that one with a grain of salt. But we do have the European Ensemble model showing this. Uh, so I think that it's going to be an interesting time frame to watch for some change. The 20th again towards the end of January there. Maybe even into February, we'll have to see. Anyway, subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon and click all videos so you always get notified when we do upload. Also, like the video. If you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.